church. It's spring break uh, for some of the schools, and uh, it's the time change, and yet you all came. This is kind of fun. So this is wonderful. So uh, as we begin our worship service today, we begin with hymn number 435. Please rise. Oh, 
continue on page 184 in the front part of our hymnal. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. And you forgave me and of my sin. you in, by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins, and by your Holy Spirit Increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will and true obedience to your word to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives, the, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. Amen. We read together the intro found on page three of our worship folder. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My, my soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altar, O Lord of hosts. My King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose heart are the highways to Zion.
third Sunday in Lent. The Old Testament reading is from the book of Exodus, chapter 17. And all the congregation of the people of Israel moved on from the wilderness of sin by stages, according to the commandment of the Lord, and camped at Rephaim. But there was no water for the people to drink. Therefore, the people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. And Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? But the people thirsted there for water. What shall I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, Pass on before the people. Take you with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand a staff which which you struck the Nile, and go. Behold, I will stand before you there on the rock in Horeb. You shall strike the rock, and water shall come out of it, and the people will drink. And Moses did so in the sight of the elders. And he called the name of the place Massa or Meribah because of the quarreling of the people of Israel. And because they tested the Lord by saying, is the Lord among us or not? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be God. The epistle reading is from Romans chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not put us to shame. Because the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare to even die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the fourth chapter. John writes, So Jesus came to a town of Samaria called Sychar, near the field that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there. So Jesus, wearied as he was from his journey, for his disciples had gone away into the city to buy food, the Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask for a drink from me, a woman of Samaria? For Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it was, who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have nothing to draw water with, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty forever. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will not be thirsty or have to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come here. 
The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying, I have no husband. For you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you say that in Jerusalem is the place where people ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father is seeking such people to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, he who is called Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with a woman, but no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking to her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of town and were coming to him. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the one's, woman's testimony. He told me all that, he, that I ever did. So the, when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. our common Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed on page 191. We confess, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, be God to not name, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We sing hymn number 761. <laughs>
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our gospel lesson is the text for our lesson today, where it strikes me that she says, it records it twice, He told me all that I ever did. Uh, is that good? In context, it seems to me that she's talking about the sins that he knows about. We uh, mentioned last week, I mentioned last week, that these next few weeks, going through the gospel lessons from John, John 3, 4, 9, 11, have uh, stories of a smart man, a thirsty woman, a blind beggar, and a sad sister. And as we look at these, uh, we can see something about the life of the people that are finding, seeking and finding Jesus. We see even more about Jesus Christ. I was asked this week because someone heard another pastor saying uh, the same kind of thing. And so, yes, it's true that we do have, uh, we help each other out. Pastors can help each other share ideas and point out that there are some uh, preaching helps here and there. There's an idea that maybe you want to grab a hold of. So I am not always originally creative, right? <laughs> Pastors help each other so that the good news can be proclaimed. Now, hopefully that's a good thing. Um, so I heard this week on one of those podcasts that I'm always pushing, it was going over this week's lessons, and it said that these lessons, that uh, the next three weeks, today and the next two weeks, are, are called in, in uh, Roman Catholic circles, the scrutinies. Okay, now that's not a bad word, and I actually pictured it sounding awfully Scottish, the scrutinies. Uh, but uh, just trying to take in a new word, trying to hear it. Uh, and what it is, is to, to, you know, to scrutinize something, is to look and investigate and look very closely at something. And I, as the person on the podcast was saying it, I thought we're going to investigate this woman at the well. We are going to look very closely at this blind beggar. We're going to wonder what's up with this sad sister. But the guy on the podcast suddenly says, where we give, we give scrutiny to the person of Jesus Christ. These lessons show us who Jesus is. We get a deep look and investigation into Christ through these lessons. And I thought that sounded even better than the strange things I was thinking. That's good because I was thinking that as this woman is being scrutinized by Jesus, he told me all that I ever did. What would that be like for us to have a face-to-face -face conversation with Jesus Christ and not know it's Jesus Christ and hear this person is suddenly saying all of the things that I've ever done. And in context with the woman, like I said, it, it seems that Jesus is calling out particularly her failings, her moral failings, her poor decisions, the, the, her sins in her life. And if someone was talking to me and started knowing not just the things that everybody knows about me, but the sins. You know, we don't want people to know our sins. Most of the time, we try to move on, not talk about how we've done that, how it was wrong, how it was hurtful, how it was sinful before God and, and shameful or hurtful to others in our lives. But here comes this Jesus, and he tells her everything she ever did. You know, in context, he, he does this, go call your husband. She said, I have no husband. That's true. You've had five. And the one you have now is not your husband. Now, we don't know how this is stressed at all. Uh, is it, and the one you have now is not your husband? Or is it, maybe it's worse, and the one you have now is not your husband? Oops. Someone else's. We've been where this lady is, standing before God. Knowing our sins, knowing our feelings, and knowing that we're not fooling God. He knows all of our sins. He knows them all. And he could talk to me about my sins and list them all. And some would say, oh, I thought I forgot that. <laughs> or can we change the subject, please? As 
Lutherans, we might easily want to say, can we just talk about how I have a sinful nature and not list all of the ways in which that sinful nature has shown up in life? <laughs> it's true, we sin because we are by nature sinful. But God still is able to tell me everything that I've ever done that was a sin. And that's scary to me. It is uh, the thought of standing before a holy and righteous God and him knowing everything can be a very scary moment for each one of us. But we have a totally different take on this in this lesson. Not where even she seems to be terrified. Jesus, in dealing with her and calling her to admit to him that she has led a sinful life, does not seem to be chasing her away. Even in maybe being uh, brutally honest, what he wants to say, he is still able to call, even through calling her to her sins, able to draw her to himself and to the knowledge of who he is. Our, our call it for the day said it in a wonderful way. That, O oh God, whose glory it is always to have mercy the glory of God. Now, if someone said, what's the glory of God? We'd start thinking of these wonderful things of gold, of, of shining things and spotlights and the great power of God. And here the prayer admits God's glory is when he shows us mercy. Is that prayer for us, right? Please be gracious to me when I go astray. Be gracious to all who have gone astray. We think of the, the woman at the well, and we think of all of the others in our lives that we may know who have gone astray, and we put ourselves right there to know, I have, and I do so often, and I will go astray. Please be gracious to us. Uh, and bring us again with a penitent heart and faith and steadfast faith to embrace the truth, the unchangeable truth of God's word. Here is God saying he will call us even to our sins. He will call us even when we stray to come back to his gracious and unchangeable word because he has mercy. This is not Jesus appearing at the woman at the well to berate her to make her feel even worse than possibly she does, why is she going to the well at noontime in the heat of the day? It appears we gather, we can infer, as many have, that here's a woman of ill repute whose name is known throughout the town. And so maybe she goes at the time when no one else is gathering water so that she can be alone. But here's Jesus, not here. She says, why are you talking to me? I'm a Samaritan woman. None of that makes sense to you. And he says, but if you knew me, if you knew the gift of God, you would ask for me to give you living water. He's offering her faith. He's creating in her this living water, even as he speaks. He's, this conversation is drawing her to a knowledge of who he is. And it seems to be what he wants to do in her is to not just say, well, living water, and let's talk about mountains. No, she wants to talk about mountains. He says, let's talk about the spirit and truth is where we worship. All of this keeps coming back to Jesus, to Jesus. If you knew him, who could give you living water? And finally, the conversation ends. Even after he has said, I know all of your relationship troubles, and he calls her out for that. The, the conversation ends, I am he. She's saying, well, I, I know that when we get to, to the Messiah, the Christ, he'll figure out, he'll know everything for us. That's me, he says. I am the Messiah who's called the Christ. I am the one who knows. I am the one who will be the Savior. He's drawing her not to only to a knowledge of her sins and not to bring that out into the open, but to bring her to know Jesus Christ. Through this scrutiny of her, he's allowing her to scrutinize him, to investigate him closely, to see who he is. And we get to hear this too. She runs off and, and is 
Shijibu drops her jar and runs off into the crowd and back into town and says, you got to see this. Come see a man. He told me everything that I ever did. Maybe the people in town are saying, we want to hear that. He told me everything that I ever did. Maybe some people in town are saying, I don't want him to know everything I've ever done. But she says, could he be, do you think he's maybe the Messiah? Could he be the one? This amazing story ends with many in the town coming to faith and knowing who Jesus is. Not only who they are, but who Jesus is. And they say, it's not just because of what you said about you, but now we believe because we have seen for ourselves, this is the Savior of the world. This is our Jesus Christ. This one who is calling us to maybe even hear our sins, to know what God knows about us. He's the one who's calling us to know what he wants us to know about him. To see Jesus Christ more clearly. To hear what his promises are for us. To give in us living water that's, that wells up to eternal life in us. And may cause us to run back out into town and say, you've got to see. You've got to hear this verse that I just heard. You need to come and hear what this Jesus Christ is. So that others will look at Christ and say, he is the Savior world. We come to this text today. We leave today knowing not only can Jesus Christ scrutinize us and call us out for everything that we've done, but he says, come and scrutinize me. Give a close investigation of who I am. Come to the word and hear this unchangeable word and these promises of Christ for you, for the forgiveness of sins for your eternal life. Amen. We rise and sing the offertory on page 192.
this time, we have the pleasure to receive new members into our congregation. I'd like to invite Joe and Sue Dudek. I think, hope I said that right. Uh, forward. Uh, most recently, Joe and Sue are, are from Buffalo, Oklahoma. <laughs> That's where my grandfather's from. Uh, Buffalo, New York. Uh, there's a big difference in those two. Uh, they're from Buffalo, New York. And they've been with us um, probably six months or more. Since July. Since July. Great, great. And, and they have requested to join Christ the King. So uh, the order for receiving new members is on page seven of our bulletin. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to the, what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and of this congregation, acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? Yes, I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, and in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God and the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from them and confessed in the small catechism to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do. By the grace of God. Do you desire to become a member of this congregation? I do. Will you support the work our gracious Lord has given this congregation with your prayers and the gifts God has given you? I will, with the help of God. Upon this, your confession, I acknowledge publicly that you are members of the Evangelical Lutheran Church and of this congregation, Christ the King Lutheran Church. Receive the Lord's Supper and participate with us in all the blessings of salvation that our Lord has given to his church. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that by your word and spirit, they may continue steadfast in the one true faith, in the fellowship of this congregation, as together we await the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. I invite you to face the congregation, our newest members, uh, Joe and Sue Dudek. And if you can return to your seats, I invite the whole congregation to rise for prayer. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, you have brought us to dwell in your house and called us to worship you in spirit and truth. Receive our praise and hear our prayers that we would leave this place satisfied with your living water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, lead us to embrace our suffering in faith as they shape us in his image and prepare us to behold your glory in heaven. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord of hosts, help the sick and suffering, especially those who desire our prayers. Surround them with your love in Christ, and according to your gracious will, heal them. Comfort all those who mourn, 
and fill their hearts with the certain hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, to you all hearts are open and all sins are known. Strengthen our hearts by your grace that we who daily sin, sin much, would make confession boldly and then joyfully receive your precious word of absolution. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue on page 194 with the preface. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in, in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Thank you. 
rise and sing the Nunc Dimittis on page God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Receive now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. number 918.
again, a welcome guest and member and visitor alike. It's a pleasure to have everyone here. Um, just to highlight a, a couple things in the announcements, uh, the Easter lilies, it's coming up uh, like you wouldn't believe. It keeps creeping up on me this Easter time. Uh, and so if you would like to donate uh, an Easter lily, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back to help beautify our sanctuary. It just looks beautiful when all those Easter lilies are here. Um, they're $9 this year. Uh, blame the economy. That's all I can say for that. But if you would like to do that, uh, there's a sign-up sheet in the back for that. Uh, also, our Wednesday evening services continue. Our Lenten services continue throughout uh, March. And uh, I don't have it here, but uh, the, the Easter Sunday uh, activities, you know, are uh, two services, seven and ten, and then the stuff in between. I'll get that in the next week's bulletin so everyone can see what's happening there for that. Um, the rest of this, as, as you can see, take this home and please make sure I haven't mi missed anything especially important to you. Um, in two weeks, we have a congregational meeting. That's on the 26th at, for our congregation members. And then two weeks after that is Easter uh, on the 9th. So uh, that's coming up very quickly here. And have I missed anything especially important or does anyone else have something they'd like to add? Uh, that is when it happened the week of uh, St. Patrick's Day. That's when everything just, uh, we all lost our minds. Uh, <laughs> it was serious. It really was serious. But we just, who ever went through a big societal change like that? Uh, all right. So uh, it, I hope everyone has a wonderful uh, weekend. I, my brain is just addled here. I'm going to blame time change. You know, it took an hour from me, and I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, uh, so I hope everyone has a wonderful week. God's blessings. Uh, Donna, did you want to say something? Yes. Um, Soup. Soup. Yep. Thank you for that, Don. I was going to forget. So welcome to, to Joe and Sue. And we have some uh, new member cake. And, and as always, so God's blessings on your day and your week.